1986, John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China was released, starring Kurt Russell and mixing ancient Eastern mysticism with action movie tropes along with plenty of humour and jokes along the way. Big Trouble in Little China has become a fan favourite over the years, adored by many who claim that even to this day it is still one of their favourite supernatural adventure movies, which continues to impress with its action set pieces and out of this world special effects. Big Trouble in Little China tells the story of loudmouth truck driver Jack Burton, who must team up with his best friend Wang Chi in order to stop San Francisco Chinatown crime bosses whom have kidnapped Chi's fiance in which a powerful sorcerer called David Lopan plans on using her to break a curse. A curse that can only be broken when he marries a woman with green eyes. So Burton and she go on a crazy comical adventure of dark fantasy and fun over-the-top comedy in this enjoyable, energetic gem that could probably only have existed in the 80s. Did you hear that, Dwayne Johnson? Hands off! So today, we are going to be looking into this dark fantasy comedy from legendary director John Carpenter as we look into 10 things that you may not know about Big Trouble in Little China to see if there are any more secrets hiding in its midst that we may be able to learn from. Let's check it out. Number 10. The Problem with Kim Cattrall's Eyes The movie co-stars a young, fresh-faced Kim Cattrall as the character Gracie Law. Most people will probably remember Cattrall from the TV show Sex and the City, but before she starred in the popular long-running sitcom, she was getting caught up in the crazy world of Big Trouble in Little China. However, working alongside the likes of Kurt Russell and John Carpenter wasn't all fun and games, as Cottrell was required to wear contact lenses to make her eyes green, and this was apparently a painful experience for the actor, as her eyes did not take well to wearing the lenses, so much so that the lenses would have to be placed in her eyes 15 minutes before shooting, as that's how long it would take for her eyes to stop weeping. Ouch, that's gotta suck. But still, good on her for soldiering on and pulling through. Number 9. Kurt Russell isn't the real hero of the movie. Despite the fact that Big Trouble in Little China was promoted as a Kurt Russell vehicle, while with his face being plastered all over the movie's posters and marketing, he actually isn't the main star of Big Trouble in Little China, despite the popular belief that he is. In fact, Dennis Dunn, who plays Wang Chi, is the movie's main hero and lead, and he honestly doesn't get anywhere near as much praise as he deserves for the movie, as he has a good and enjoyable screen presence, and it's fun watching him kick ass. But I guess it was decided that he wouldn't be as marketable as Russell. Also, he very nearly wasn't even in the movie, as his agent strongly urged him not to star in the film, but to star in a made-for-TV movie instead, as his agent felt that Big Trouble in Little China was just too damn weird. Hmm, I don't know why he would think that. Number 8. A New Beginning Had to Be Filmed John Carpenter always felt that Big Trouble in Little China shouldn't have a main hero, but rather an ensemble of heroes for the audience to root for. However, it was decided that Kurt Russell would be the marketing's main focus point, and that his character Jack needed to appear more heroic. So even though filming had already wrapped up, John Carpenter had to go back and film an alternative introduction. Thus, that's why we get the scene at the start of the movie, where the Egg Sen character is talking about how courageous Jack Burton is. The original beginning of the movie would have just introduced Jack driving his truck, which I think would have been a more fitting introduction to the character. But regardless, the new beginning was put together and, well, it is what it is. Number 7. It was the fourth Russell and Carpenter collaboration.
When it comes to 80s horror action movies, it seems that the collaborations of Kurt Russell and John Carpenter was a match made in heaven, as the actor-director duo made several movies together, with Big Trouble in Little China being their fourth combined work effort. The first was the 1979 TV movie called Elvis, in which Russell plays the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis Presley, which almost sounds too good to be true. Then jumped two years later in 1981 and Russell was cast in the legendary role of Snake Plissken in Escape from New York, in which the studio originally wanted Charles Bronson in the role, but Carpenter thought the veteran actor was too old and stuck with his guns with Russell. And then the two worked together again one year later in 1982 in the awesome gross-out splatterfest, The Thing. And then finally on Big Trouble in Little China. Russell was considered to star in Carpenter's next movie, They Live, but wrestler Roddy Piper was cast instead. And sadly, Carpenter's and Russell's joint efforts ended on a somewhat down note with the unnecessary sequel to Escape from New York, Escape from LA. Wow, what a sad way to end a great working partnership. Number six, Set Recycle. So, what ended up happening to the set that was used for Big Trouble in Little China? Well, that's an interesting question, as the sets built for the adventure movie would go on to be used once again in the unlikeliest of places, a music video, namely a Janet Jackson music video. Yep, so if you've ever watched Big Trouble in Little China and felt that there just wasn't enough Janet Jackson dancing around doing her thing, then today is your lucky day, as the 1993 music video for her song If reused some of the sets created for the movie. For her ambitious music video, which was actually quite controversial for its time, for pushing the boundaries of raunchiness. But hey, that's a story for another time. That and I don't want to get banished from YouTube. So I suppose if you want to give your music video some gravitas, then just use recycled sets from the movies, and voila, you get a top-notch music video. However, IF isn't the only music video associated with Big Trouble in Little China, which brings me to my next point. Number 5. Bizarre Music Video You can feel the wind as with many of his movies, John Carpenter scored the music for Big Trouble in Little China, along with Alan Howarth. And although the music often receives great praise, with many claiming it to be one of Carpenter's finest musical scores, that didn't stop Carpenter from making a weird music video to help promote the movie. Yep, not only is John Carpenter a legendary filmmaker and composer, but it seems in 1986, he was a pop star too, as a music video was put together for a song that he wrote for the movie, called Big Trouble in Little China. Which also featured some other filmmakers, such as Tommy Lee Wallace. And to be honest, the music video is a little bizarre to say the least. I mean, I don't quite know what to make of this. All I can say is that if you've ever wanted to see a bunch of middle-aged filmmakers with their beards and cardigans getting their jam on, uh, <laughs> then this is the music video for you. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I just talked about John Carpenter getting his jam on. God, I love the 80s! Number 4. Special Effects Wizard Big Trouble in Little China showcases some great special effects. Whether it's optical work or monster creatures, one thing you can't deny is that it still looks impressive, especially considering if the movie was made now, it'll all be CGI. The special effects supervisor of the movie was the legendary Richard Edlund, who even by 1986 was a huge pioneer in the industry, having worked for Industrial Light and Magic, where he worked on movies such as the original Star Wars trilogy, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Poltergeist. However, the movie he is probably most remembered for is Ghostbusters, where he left Industrial Light and Magic to set up his own special effects company, Boss Films. And so from there, Ed Loon's talents extended to the strange and mystical world of Big Trouble in Little China. And Ed Loon has since said that he feels that his best works was featured in Ghostbusters and Big Trouble in Little China. 
So if you were impressed by the monsters and creatures from Ghostbusters, then Big Trouble in Little China is totally for you. Number three, Mystical Competition. Nineteen eighty six actually saw two movies that would explore supernatural Eastern mysticisms and sorcery, but with a Western comedic twist. One being Big Trouble in Little China, and the other being the Eddie Murphy comedy The Golden Child. Carpenter was actually offered the job of directing The Golden Child, but turned it down to work on Big Trouble in Little China instead. And apart from the similar settings, there is actually several similarities between the movies. Both Big Trouble in Little China and The Golden Child star Victor Wong and James Hong, and both movies mix up dark fantasy with action and comedy. Big Trouble in Little China's production worked hard to make sure that their movie would be released before The Golden Child. Which is probably why, despite the fact that both movies didn't do well in the box office, Big Trouble in Little China was looked upon more favourably, with a much bigger fan base and now cult status. And yeah, that's no lie. Big Trouble in Little China didn't fare up too well upon its release. Which brings me to, yet again, my next point. Number two, the movie flopped. John Carpenter said that 20th Century Fox promised a huge extravagant marketing for the movie, but said that he never saw what was promised and claims that 20th Century Fox only put in $3 million on marketing the film. Even Kurt Russell jokes about the movie's marketing and how he couldn't recognize himself on the movie's poster. And maybe the lack of a spectacular approach to advertising the movie is what led to its downfall, only bringing in $11 million on a $20 million odd dollar budget. Ouch. But still, the movie got praised by critics and has gone on to become a huge cult favourite, with many adoring fans. And, as I have now mentioned many times in this show, how much money a movie makes in the box office doesn't determine if it's a good movie or not. But clearly, more than $3 million was needed to get the movie out there. Number one, it was originally a Western. As hard as it may be to take in, Big Trouble in Little China was originally going to be a Western, set in San Francisco in the 1890s, with Jack Burton riding into town on a horse, to which he spends the rest of the movie trying to get his horse back, which in the rewrites of the script was changed to his truck pork chop. The original script was written by Gary Goldman and David Z. Weinstein. However, W.D. Richter, who previously worked on the adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai across the eighth dimension, was brought on board to do the rewrites and decided the script should be more comedic and decided to make it a contemporary movie set in modern times. And although I love Big Trouble in Little China and wouldn't want it any other way, I do think it's an interesting idea to have a Western cowboy movie revolve around Eastern mythology and sorcery. But oh well, it is what it is, and we all love the movie for what it is. Okay, peoples, that was my look into Big Trouble in Little China. I hope you all enjoyed it and maybe feel inspired and motivated to go and watch it again. And if you don't, well, then you should watch it again. So with that, I'm Minty, and is it just me or is Porkchop a really awesome name for a truck? See ya!